welcome to the Raven Knoll Show. I'm your host, Raven C. Knoll. I'm a wife, mother, counselor, mindset coach, and speaker, helping you win from within. Today, I am going to be diving into a topic that I believe many people can relate to, okay? Specifically, female leaders and those in leadership positions, okay? And that is the fear of asking for help. We're going to be talking about that today. And I'm also going to be sharing a little bit about myself as well and how I overcame the fear of asking for help and what happened when I actually came, overcame that fear, okay? So you might be saying, okay, I don't know if I have a fear of asking for help, but I guarantee in some way, shape, or form that there may be a hesitation when it comes to asking for help, okay? And so there's usually two reasons for this when it comes to female leaders or those in leadership positions or just those who you are high achieving women, you're kind of bossing your, your stuff, you're doing your thing, you're climbing the corporate ladder, you're building a business, whatever that looks like, okay? There's two reasons for this, okay? Two reasons. Number one, female leaders feel like they can do it best, okay? That's just the truth, right? When you are a female leader or you're in a leadership position or you're the front facing anything, you feel like you can do it best because typically those that are female leaders and those that are in leadership positions you're very strong-willed. You're a goal-getter, right? You, you you go after the thing that you want. You make it happen and you feel like you can do it best, right? And so the task, the content, whatever it is, and giving, you feel like you can handle it or you can do it best. And giving that responsibility over to someone else means trusting someone else to obtain a result at the level that you would, all right? And for some people, that's a little bit scary. And then number two, Female leaders like to be in control. Hello, anybody? <laughs> if that's you, say ouch, okay? That is me. So asking for help means you have to relinquish or surrender your control to someone else. And that in itself can be scary and it can also be very triggering, all right? And so today I want to teach and tell you about what happened when I overcame the fear of asking for help as a female leader. So first and foremost... A lot of female leaders, like I said, especially those who are very independent, strong-willed, visionary types of women, you're pretty much hardwired to do things on your own. So those that are, if you consider yourself a leader, if you consider yourself a female leader in any capacity, a lot of times you're pretty much hardwired based on life, based on upbringing, based on just who you are personality-wise, you are hard, hardwired to get things done and to do them on your own. And so you've gotten where you are today because of the hard work that you put in. You didn't quit. You didn't let failure stop you. When things got hard or complicated, you figured it out. You figured out a way to simplify it or to make it work. And so through that hard work, you've also cultivated this mindset that you are the person that you can trust to get the job done. When you have been the person that has made it happen, when you have been the person that's had to encourage yourself to continue to, to, to go, to, to build, to move forward, to go after it, when you've had to develop the grit to make it happen, you develop a mindset and an outlook that you are the person that you can trust to get it done. So it can be very scary to hand over that responsibility to anyone else or to ask anyone else to step in and to help you be able to plow forward or build forward or continue to lead or whatever it is that you may need or what is necessary for you, okay? So then on the flip side, there are those who feel like asking for help equals being needy. And if I'm needy, that means I'm weak. So some people associate asking for help as being needy and being needy is associated with being weak. So I don't wanna ask for help because I don't wanna look like I'm being needy and I don't wanna seem as if I'm weak. When you are a strong-willed individual, when you are a strong-willed woman, <laughs> when you are in some type of leadership position or you're the front facing of anything, if you've built your business, you have clients, you have those that you work with, you are, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, you wanna ultimately, a lot of time, we, we, we wanna have this facade or this persona or this reputation, that's a better word to say, that you are strong-willed, that you have it all together and that you don't need help. So again, asking for help could equal looking like you are needy and then that can also equate to feeling like you are a weak individual. Those who are strong-willed women, you do not necessarily like the feeling of being vulnerable 
to the point where people will associate you with being weak in any capacity. Now, a lot of this comes from this superwoman complex, especially in black culture. You're, expe you're, you're expected to be able to handle it. You're expected to keep it together. You're expected to be that strong black woman. And because of this, you truly believe that you can do it alone and you can handle it alone. Because what? I've been built for this. Whether you've seen people in your family do it, whether you've seen your, your mother have to go through it, whether you've seen you know other figures have to hold it together, hold the household together, work the job, feed the family, do all these different things, show up for ministry, wear all these different hats. You're like, I'm built for this. I can handle all this. There's a superwoman complex there where you don't want to look weak or that you dropped the ball. So there's this, this idea in your head that you've created that I'm superwoman. Well, I don't want to burst your bubble. <laughs> I don't want to put a pin into your balloon today, okay? But that's simply not true. It's simply not true. I don't care who else have told you that they are superwoman. I don't care if you've believed that lie before. I don't care if other people have gone online and encouraged you to be a superhero. I'm, I'm here to burst your bubble and I'm, I'm here to tell you that you're not superwoman and you're not superhuman, okay? Let's just have a, a moment of honesty here. You're not superwoman and you're not superhuman. You may be strong-willed. You may be a go-getter. You may be resilient. You may have the skill set and the ability to lead, but you have limitations and a capacity cap. Whether you want to hear it or not, you have limitations and a capacity cap. Now, also, you are doing yourself a disservice when you try and do it all. Because you can go much further, much faster when you ask for the help that you need. You are doing yourself a disservice when you feel like you have to do it all or you try to do it all. Because listen to me, when you ask for the help that you need, whatever that looks like for you, you can go much further, much faster when you actually ask. Now, believe it or not, <laughs> asking for help actually communicates strength. People associate asking for help as being vulnerable and looking like I can't hold it all together and I'm weak and I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't show up for all my obligations or all my responsibilities, I can't juggle all these, these things that I'm carrying. And so people associate that with being weak. But when you are asking for help, that's actually communicating strength. <laughs> Listen, I have limitations and capacity cap. We have to come into that resolve. Okay, as women, no matter what you have on your plate, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're carrying, you're so welcome. No matter what you're carrying, you have limitations and a capacity cap. And the sooner that you actually resolve that, the better it is going to be for you in the long run. All right. So I just want you to know that when you're looking at me today, I'm strong enough to acknowledge that I have blind spots and I have weaknesses. A lot of us don't want to acknowledge that there are moments where we just can't handle it all. We just can't carry it all. That we have blind spots that we're not able to see it all. That we're not able to show up in all capacities at all times. We cannot be all things for everybody at all times. And it's okay to acknowledge that I have blind spots and that I have weakness. And because of that, I need help. And so do you. And so I'm strong enough to know that I need a team to truly move my business forward in the capacity that I desire to. I'm pregnant right now. I have a small child. I know that I need help to be able to accomplish the things that I want to accomplish or I desire to accomplish. I'm strong enough to know that relationships are currency and partnering with those who have more knowledge or expertise than I do in a certain area pays more in the long run than any other investment I could ever make. I'm strong enough to know that I don't have all the tools in my tool belt, that other people provide the tools that I need to be able to get the job done. I'm strong enough to know that. So when I started asking for help, I realized that I was getting much more done and I was a lot less stressed and overwhelmed. Y'all following me so far? I want to make sure this is connecting with you. So when I started to ask for help, I just kind of want to give you a little bit of my backstory I realized that I was getting so much more done, I was so much more less stressed, and I was so much more less overwhelmed. Specifically, for me, I started to perform better at a higher rate. 
So some of you have goals and different things that you want to do. Whatever sphere of influence you're in, whatever your career is, whatever your profession is, whatever your desires are, whatever business you have. When you start to ask for help, you'll actually perform better at a higher rate. So a lot of you have goals and things that you want to accomplish that you haven't been able to accomplish or you actually haven't been able to move forward in it because you haven't asked for the help that you need to be able to push the vision forward or be able to push whatever it is that you're carrying forward. And so at one point in my business, in my career, I was living in chaos. Okay, I'll be honest with you. At one point in my life and in my, in my career, my uh, business, I was living in chaos. Because business is not my expertise. Inner work is my expertise. Business is not what, I'm a business owner, but I'm not one out here teaching people how to build businesses. My expertise is inner work. So within my business, I've had to invest into multiple coaching programs with people with a higher knowledge level than me in business. And trust me, I'm gonna get somewhere with this. As I'm sharing my story, just follow me, okay? So within my business, I've had to invest in multiple coaching programs because there are people out there with a higher knowledge bank than I have in business that I need. I needed that help. So they took the chaos I was living in trying to figure out how to move my business forward and and how to make this thing grow and all these different things. And they gave me a strategy that cut my process in half. But that could have only happened if I asked for help. So it gave me more time with my family, less time doing tasks that didn't matter. Not only that, but plugging into the right relationships and investing in myself significantly improved my personal mental health. Now, y'all know I'm the one that talks about mental health and emotional health and making sure you do the inner work and all that type of stuff. But when I was void of asking for help, I was struggling. When I was void of being vulnerable enough to say, listen, I am living in chaos. I don't know what I'm doing. I need some help. I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed out. I'm trying to carry all this stuff. I was struggling. And so I remember years ago when I was severely overwhelmed and I just did not feel fulfilled in life. I was struggling with depression, y'all. I was sad. I just felt like, what am I doing? You know how you just, you feel like you're working towards something, but there's just no result. (laughs) You're showing up for stuff, but it's just not purposeful. You're like, this is just so unaligned. What I feel like God is calling me to do in the long run, but you still got to show up for it. And you still got to, you know, uh, get, you know, go to it because that's what pays the bills or whatever that looks like for you. But you're like, I am struggling because I do not love what I'm doing. It feels like such a big waste of my time. All this different stuff goes on through your head because you don't necessarily feel aligned with the work that you're doing, but it's very common. Now I've always had a passion for business. I've always had a passion for business. I've always wear multiple hats always had to serve in some type of leadership position or something of that nature. But at the same time, I still had all these goals that I wanted to accomplish that I had yet to accomplish. Even though the business was happening, even though I was showing up in different leadership capacities, there were still things in my life that I wanted to accomplish that I feel like I was not accomplishing. I feel like it was not getting done. And that in itself was an overwhelming feeling. That in itself overwhelm my thoughts and overwhelm my day especially when you got to show up for something that you feel like it's just you're just going for a paycheck or you just feel like you're just I'm just here like <laughs> why am I here right you get there you're just like before you can even walk in the door and I know it because I've been there you're just like oh my god here we go with this again or this same kind of mundane process of life that's overwhelming in itself to feel like you're showing up for something that you don't want to be there for And so (laughs) at the time, I felt capped at my job. I felt like I wasn't truly aligned with what was purposeful for me, like I said, and and the best use of my use of my time. And so (laughs) it happened. And so the thought of all of that, like I said, was very overwhelming. And I just didn't know when I was going to get off of this roller coaster ride of being unfulfilled. Like, I literally just felt like it was a never ending roller coaster ride of just not being fulfilled. And you would think, you know, a person that, you know, is in a good career position or does have some leadership responsibilities or it looks purposeful, but it's not really purposeful. You know what I mean? Like, there's just still this discontentment and this feeling of just being unfulfilled. Like, there's just still this emptiness internally that's happening. And so I'm like, how am I ever going to get off this roller coaster ride of just discontentment and just feeling like I'm going through this mundane cycle of life? But at the same time, I didn't want to be vulnerable 
and acknowledge that I needed real help to be able to push forward my vision for myself. If I was ever going to get off this ender, you know, never ending cycle of discontentment, I had to be vulnerable enough, not only to number one, acknowledge that I felt the way that I felt, but also say, okay, I need some help. And so I remember praying and asking God to reveal to me someone who could truly be a source of help to move my goals forward. I remember asking God this very vividly. And so the opportunity, you know, after I prayed and I was asking God, Lord, reveal it to me, show it to me. You know, you you start praying about certain things and you're like, God, give me a sign, confirm it. Duh, 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 duh. You know, you're really into it. You know, <laughs> anybody ever been there where you're like, okay, I'm really asking God. I'm really in a prayer time. And you're like, God, confirm it. Send me a dream. Tell somebody to tell me this is what you're saying. Well, listen. The opportunity, it didn't come with bells and whistles. The opportunity didn't come with a flashing sign that said, here I am. This is, this is the opportunity. It didn't come with, you know, a dream that the Lord sent me. None of that happened. The opportunity came literally with someone online with a program that spoke to what I needed. And that was God's way of saying, here it is. It just so happened that I actually, you know, was online. I kind of was swiping through some things and I seen something that aligned with the exact need that I had. And so, you know, of course you're like, oh, I do need that. But the overwhelming feeling of, oh, that means I got to actually ask, I got to reach out or I got to submit an application or I got to tell them the, <laughs> the exact things that I need that asking for help. There's a hesitation there, right? There's a fear that probably comes up because it's like, oh, that means I really don't. And sometimes we don't even realize it. Sometimes we just, we will see an opportunity or, or we'll see something that aligns with the need that we have, but we don't even realize that a fear response is kicked in at that moment, that we're triggered to invulnerability, that we're triggered to be able to actually be honest and vulnerable and say, oh, that means this is me acknowledging that I don't have it all together. This is me acknowledging that I really do need some additional help. This is me acknowledging that I am struggling in an area. If I actually reach out, if I actually move forward, if I actually ask a question, if I actually do some research to move forward in this decision, then that means I'm actually acknowledging that there's a problem or an issue here. And so sometimes we don't even realize that those fear responses begin to be triggered, that we're just like, I don't want to be that vulnerable. I don't want to acknowledge that I'm dropping the ball. I don't want to acknowledge that this may feel like a failure to me. I don't want to acknowledge that I don't actually have it all together. And so that's usually what happens when we do get some of these opportunities that come before us. And so, like I said, for me, it wasn't these bells and whistles. It wasn't like this parade. It wasn't these lights, camera, action. It was simply, you pray to prayer. I'm going to allow you to be online at the time when this post is posted so that you can see that there's an opportunity for you. And so that's literally what happened to me. That's literally what, 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 what the situation was for me. And that's exactly how God answered the prayer. Now, like I said, this is not some big situation where it's like, here it is. This is an opportunity where you have to be able to take a risk. That's what it, it turned into. If the opportunity shows itself, are you willing to take the risk? Are you willing to face the fear? Are you willing to move forward and ask for the help that you need and be vulnerable? It was a challenge in the moment of what I needed. And so, you know, like I said, God was saying to me, this is the opportunity to remove the chaos, the overwhelm, and finally accomplish the goals that matter the most to you. And so the only way that I was actually able to overcome the fear of asking for help, the only way that actually happened for me and the only way that I was able to actually reach out for that person to ask for help was to take the risk and, and face the fear. Now, if you've been in any other programs that I've been a part of, anything that you've seen me speak about, any of my posts, I'm going to always tell you the same thing. The only way that you overcome fear is if you take the risk and you face it. That is the only way that you're going to tell your brain that this is safe. Because if you do not, you're going to continue to, to be wired and triggered to think that this is unsafe. That is what fear is. Fear is telling you that there is an unsafe situation. Fear is, is, is communicating to you that something within your mind is telling you that this situation is, is, fear, is, is not safe. Vulnerability in your mind can register a place of unsafety. Asking for help based on what may have happened to you in the past can trigger <laughs> in your mind 
that this is not safe to ask for help based on something that happened before. Taking a risk can be triggered in your mind that this is not safe. And so the only way that you overcome the fear is if you face the fear and you begin to rewrite the narrative that this is actually not unsafe. This is actually safe. May take some hard work. May take a couple trial and errors. <laughs> may stretch me beyond my comfort zone. But that doesn't mean it's unsafe. And so that, for me, was what I had to do. And once I did that, now years later, I'm living an aligned life that I feel is purposeful. I'm not depressed. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm at peace loving what I do and being able to thrive in what I do all because I was able to muster up the courage to take the risk and ask for the help that I needed. And so asking for help for you could seem extremely vulnerable. It can seem very risky. <laughs> It can seem that there may be there may be some fear attached to it. There may be some fear associated with it. But you'll never know what's on the other side unless you ask for the help that you need. You'll never know what can be produced through you unless you ask for the help that you need. You never know how far God can take you unless you ask for the help that you need. You never know how successful you can actually be unless you ask for the help that you need. You never know what, op what other opportunities are out there for you unless you ask for the help that you need. You never know what doors could be opened unless you ask for the help that you need. You'll never know what's on the other side of this fear of vulnerability, this fear of asking for help, this fear of taking the risk. You'll never know what's on the other side of it unless you ask for what you need. And so you can stay in the same predicament that you're in. You can keep hoping and praying and desiring. <laughs> you can keep thinking about it. You can keep imagining it. You can keep writing the vision. You can keep doing all these different things. But until you take action or you take a step in the direction of what you actually need, all of that continues to be just a thought, just a dream, just a vision, just my potential. That one right there. When do we move from potential to actually being the thing that we know we are capable of? When do we move from potential to actually living in the reality of what we know God has called us to live in? That takes risk and asking for help. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Asking for help truly transformed my business and it transformed my life. And so I just wanted to give you a little bit of context in that way. Did this register with you? Did it connect with you? Did this encourage you? Was this something that you really felt like gave you some clarity or helped you gain clarity. I always get all the time. How can I work with you, Raven? So my eight-week Mindset to Momentum intensive is now open for enrollment. So if you are interested um, in working with me and you feel like you are an overwhelmed female leader who wants to accomplish at least two of her personal and professional goals by transforming, transforming her thinking without burning out in the next eight weeks, the application is now open for my program. And if you are interested, you can go to www.mindsettomomentum.com and apply. And you can also feel free to DM me goals and I will answer any questions that you have about the program as well. But if you are a female leader and you're ready to ditch the overwhelm and finally achieve your goals, let's do this work, okay? All right, any questions for me? Thank y'all for rocking and rolling with me today. I will be going live a lot more this month. I have a couple things that I kind of just want to talk through that I think is going to be very helpful and useful for those that consider themselves female leaders in any capacity, whether that's in a corporate setting or business, ministry, whatever that is. And I have a lot of things that I kind of just want to unravel and talk through that I think will be very helpful for you as well. So you can look forward to me going live a lot more this month. So thanks for rocking and rolling with me today. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was encouraging. I hope that this was something that you needed to shift your perspective as well as help you to gain clarity. All right. <laughs> all right. I will talk to you all soon.
This has been The Raven Knoll Show. Thanks for listening. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to this podcast so you're the first to know when new episodes are released. And don't forget to leave a review. If you can't wait until the next show, follow along on Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter at Raven C. Knoll for more tips and to keep the conversation going. Go ahead and DM me on Instagram or take a screenshot of this podcast and share it to your IG stories. I want to know about your takeaways from the show. Don't forget to tag me and use the hashtag RCN Pod Squad. Lastly, visit my website at ravencnoll.com and join my email list to get exclusive bonuses only for my email subscribers. Thanks again for rocking and rolling with me. I'll talk to you soon.